Hey there, Steve here. In our last episode, we brought home a Mr. and Miss Pac-Man pinball machine. When we went to go pick it up, we discovered a few intermittent problems. Some of the switches weren't working, some of the displays were out, and so forth. In this episode, we're going to troubleshoot those switches and see if we can get this thing operational again. Are you ready? Stick around. You won't want to miss out. Kill shot ahead. I purchased this 35 year old Pac-Man pinball knowing it needed some minor work, most of which was cosmetic. Once everything was set up and running, I anxiously fired her up to put her through her paces before diving into any repairs. However, the fun was quickly cut short when instead of this, I got this. When troubleshooting electrical circuits, the first rule of thumb is to start with the last known source of power. So the first thing I did was check for any breaks between the out hole switch and the MPU located behind the back glass. To do this, I fashioned a makeshift probe from a paper clip that could fit into the harness at the MPU side. Confident that there wasn't a break, I moved on to the next step. Since I already knew a few of the other switches weren't working properly, I manually tested every one of them during gameplay and highlighted the bad ones on the playfield diagram. Realizing there was more than just a few, I decided to utilize the built-in self-diagnostic tests which are activated by pressing the self-test button inside the coin door. Each press of the button cycles through various routines including displays, lights, solenoids, and switches, just to name a few. Pressing the self-test button again causes the MPU to search each switch assembly for stuck contacts. If any are found, the number the first set encountered is flashed on the player's score display. The number remains until the fault is cleared. Following this procedure, I was able to identify any switch that was stuck open, or in this case, any break in the overall circuit. With this data, I was able to narrow down specific faults more accurately and look for inconsistencies in the switch matrix. So what exactly is the switch matrix? The switch matrix is the network of electromechanical switches located beneath the playfield that communicate with the MPU when one of them is triggered. The purpose of this configuration is to minimize playfield wiring by reducing the number of driver circuits. To accomplish this, the switches are wired electronically in a grid-like pattern consisting of columns and rows. The MPU then sends out a pulse signal across each column sequentially while monitoring all of the rows. When a switch is closed, the pulse is diverted and sent back to the MPU indicating which one was triggered. Each switch is equipped with a blocking diode that allows electricity to flow in one direction only. If any of these diodes go bad, the matrix will exhibit unusual behavior. Since the diagnostic test revealed multiple faults including inconsistencies across columns 78 and 65, the next step in the process was to check each of the suspected diodes as highlighted in the schematic. Surprisingly, I was unable to find any bad diodes or breaks in the circuit which left me scratching my head. So it was back to the drawing board, beginning once again with the last known source of power. As luck would have it, I wound up stumbling across the problem purely by accident. After checking for continuity at the wiring harness multiple times, on one attempt, I failed to seat it properly to the MPU board. When I turned the game on for another test, I was amazed to find everything working. With this discovery, it was now obvious that I had a bad connector. So all that's left to do now is just to order a new one and we'll be all set. Well that about does it for this episode. If you're interested in learning more about switch matrix troubleshooting, I encourage you to visit Pinball Rehab's Switch Matrix Theory and Troubleshooting page. I'll be sure to leave a link down below in the description. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any other great episodes just like this one. Until next time, thanks for watching That Geek Guy. We'll see you next time. Hey there, thanks for watching That Geek Guy. If you like what you just saw, give us a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. Just click on the geek image in the circle. When you're done, 
check out more helpful videos like this one to the left. Catch you later!